<laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, let me put the title up. Um, cool. Uh, I'm really glad I followed that talk because this is um, this is a talk about how we do uh, decentralized indexing in um, uh, Storatcha. Like, it's a whole bunch of like backstory and stuff that you probably don't need to know, but it's kind of interesting. And I thought you might like to hear about it anyway. Um, but it's basically how we use IPNI, or we're going to use hopefully IPNI to decentralize uh, our storage network. So just for context, uh, don't expect you to know anything about storage. It's brand new, but it's kind of the evolution of web-free storage uh, becoming a completely decentralized storage network um, for both storage and retrieval. Um, woo, OK. <laughs> so from the top, uh, it's all about like, transferring DAGs from one place to another. Uh, so we're talking about taking files, uh, do something to them, make a, a DAG, directed a cyclic graph, uh, and then basically try and put them on a node in the network uh, somewhere. So uh, yeah, how, how to do that. So there's kind of two approaches to this, basically. There's like the traditional uh, kind of I, well, traditional in IPFS sense, pull-based approach, or you can do like pushing as well. So uh, you've got like your local thing on the left-hand side, what you're doing on the client, and the remote place where you actually want stuff stored so that it can be retrieved even when you shut your laptop. There's still a node out there that's actually hosting your stuff and sending it to, off to other people. So, um, Traditionally, pull-based approach, create your DAG, put it in a local IPFS node, right? And then you, uh, you grab hold of that root hash, your, your Baffy, uh, and you basically say, hey, remote, pull this Baffy. And the, and the remote uh, node will eventually, uh, hopefully, because it's built on top of libp 2 b um, do magic and, uh, and pull, uh, pull that whole DAG from your local node into the remote node. Um, and that, that works, and that's, uh, that's super cool, uh, and uh, I, I really like it. But it, there's certain times and instances and places where it doesn't always work. Um, and uh, let me just explain a little bit. Um, Sometimes there's uh, a wall that's on fire. Uh, there's like firewalls, there's NATs, there's like general connectivity uh, issues and stuff like that uh, that mean that libp2b is not always able to, to connect from one place to another. It's really good. It's really good at that, but it's uh, not 100% all the time uh, good, unfortunately. Um, the other reason is that like um, you might not want to be running an, an IPFS node. Like you might be on a mobile. Uh, you could be running a Raspberry Pi and you don't have enough resources to be running a whole IPFS node. You might like create this DAG and be like, I don't actually want to store this on my IPFS node. I just want to send it up there for the web to get. Um, uh, yeah, so lots of reasons why you might might not want to. Um, also, it could it, like, another reason, just thought of it. Um, you could have like an app uh, that's uh, that's like maybe you're minting NFTs or something. You're not. It's maybe it's overkill to run a, a, an IPFS node just to add stuff and, and get it um, get it moved to somewhere else where it can be fetched forever. <sighs> uh, but I think the biggest thing for me is that there's no, there's no like transactional guarantee. Like once you ask this remote node to uh, to pull up this uh, pull this DAG from your local one, you can't like you don't know when it's done. Um, if you've got a big file, it could take a long time. I can't just shut my laptop and wander off uh, ever, because like it might not happen at all. <laughs> uh, and so like, how do I know? There's no like callback that I can get that, that will tell me when that, when it's finished, when it's done. Um, that's, that's really annoying. So um, in some instances, it's um, it's better to do like a, a kind of more push-based thing, where uh, you, it, especially in like uh, the services that 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 I've been trying trying to run for a while now. Uh, on the client side, instead of putting that DAG that you've created into a local IPFS node, maybe you pack it into a, a car file. Car file is content addressed archived. I, um, this, <laughs> I will depict that as a car emoji in the slides from now on, but just, it's not a real car, it's a file, okay? Just, you know, you get it. Um, <laughs> so anyway, put your DAG in a car. And then once you've got a car file, um, what you can do is you can just do like a regular old HTTP put to an IPFS instance, and um, and we used to put a cluster, IPFS cluster, because um, uh, it support it has an API which allows you to just put um, car files to it, which is which is pretty rad. Um, uh, so that's that's super easy. And once you've put that file, you'll know that it has got there because you did the request, and then you know it succeeded. So uh, there's there's that sort of more more transactional guarantee there. Um, 
once cluster receives it, it will actually put it to multiple nodes because cluster, uh, but uh, what it does is it, can, it will take that car file, unpack it, uh, and for every block that it finds in that car file, it will actually put a block in its uh, block store. The block store is, um, as you can imagine, indexed by uh, the, the hash of the block, uh, so when IPFS uh, cluster needs to serve that back to someone, it can just uh, you know, it'll get, it'll get asked for a CID and it can go to the block store and grab it, grab that data and send it back. So, um, yeah, IPFS cluster is amazing, but there is a non-zero management overhead. If you're running cluster, you are running multiple IPFS nodes, uh, potentially on like bare metal hardware. If you, depending on how much you're storing, uh, you're going to have to have quite big disks. You, uh, you'd need to do things like uh, update software occasionally. Sometimes, well, okay, it's may, maybe uh, Kubo is more uh, a little bit more stable nowadays. But um, when I was experiencing this, um, the the like Kubo would just occasionally get tired and fall over, and <laughs> and then you'd have to go and sort of um, restart it. So there's like also like pager duty and stuff, um, which is kind of frustrating. Um, uh, and, and then, like, because, like you've also got Rust, uh, cluster uh, being like right target. If it gets some data that's super busy, then uh, if it's that's super popular, it will, it's also the read target, and it's also doing a whole bunch of, bunch of like DHT puts. It can get busy, uh, and uh, and yeah. So there is there is something to consider there. It's, a, it's IPFS. It's a complicated system that runs, and you have to uh, babysit it essentially. So. Um, so having experienced this um, at quite a large scale for a long time, like we were running like a cluster of 52 nodes or something uh, at one point, and um, the, this idea of like cars at rest came around where uh, we were like, why don't we not do that? And why don't we, uh, why don't we not do the cluster thing? Why don't we just put cars to like some sort of bucket somewhere, some sim simple storage, uh, and then and not do anything with them. Uh, and so in, it's instead of like uh, uh, <laughs> sending it to cluster, we'd just send the car, and it would persist as a car uh, in, on some disk somewhere, uh, just as it is. Um, so that idea came around. Um, and so that's kind of cool, because you don't need to then take that car and unpack it. Um, you've got like to the to, on the dumb servers uh, thing. Uh, I'm interested in dumb servers as well. Uh, you don't you you basically have a, a server that would uh, that um, can receive data, take some bytes in, put it to disk, and uh, and also send bytes back. And that's all it does. <laughs> and it's uh, and it, it doesn't really fall over. There's nothing really to go wrong there because it's so simple, uh, which is great. Um, but like. Content is it still content addressed? Is it are we still good here? And it's like, yeah, kind of like the car in and of itself is a bunch of blocks which are all content addressed data anyway. And if you take that car and kind of consider it as a one big block anyway, you can actually take the hash of the car file as a whole um, and and you can uh, you can use that hash a lot of a lot of the places that allow you to just put bytes also allow you to specify like you specif specify like the the hash like sha2256 of the file that you're about to put so when the file arrives it can verify that, that what you said you'd send is what it received and has been stored um, so that's kind of cool um, kind of like that uh, but how do we how do we even serve this now because we don't have like a block store that we can kind of pick stuff out so um, so uh, we need to do something about that. When you consider a car file is basically like a bunch of blocks that are um, that are concatenated together like this, uh, five blocks here, <laughs> my Buffy Buffy A B C D E. Um, you can kind of you can kind of envisage the, the like you can just like create this information about the blocks that are in the car file, like the offset and the their lengths for every single block. And then if you need to grab a block, then you can just sort of go to that. By that that offset and take that length and then you've got your block. You just read it out of the file from those offsets, um, uh, and 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 so that's an index. It's an index over the car file. Um, car v2. There's a spec uh, that has indexes. You can see the indexes are at the end there. Uh, that, like there's a format. There's two formats actually. Um, uh, and and so that's that that's interesting. They're they're right at the end there of a car a car it's like a car wrapped in a in a, another thing. Um, but anyway, Carvey two has them. 
But there's, uh, there's a couple of issues uh, that are relevant to me, at least. Um, number one is where is the index? Um, like, I don't know, where do, where, does, where do I start reading the index? Do not know. Have to read the front of the file, read the car header, and not even like a known quantity of header uh, to, to, to know exactly where the index is, I think, is, is how that works. Um, so that's like two, if you just got this simple sto storage thing, it's kind of two requests, it's like read the header, read the actual index, and that's kind of annoying, right? Um, number two is, um, how, how big are the blocks? The, in, the index, the format for the index is like all of the multi-hashes that are in the car file and their offsets, but not their, um, not their lengths as well. So if you wanna read a block out of the car file, you actually have to go, like you take the offset, read a bit, because actually the offset is not to the block data, it's to like every block has a little block header which tells you how long the block is. So you have to do like a, uh, a, a read to read how much you want to read from the car. Uh, so it's like, ah, okay. And then like, and then you'll get, you basically have to guess because you'll be like, well, okay, my blocks are probably not going to be like more than two megabytes. I'll ask for two megabytes and then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and, and then see what I get. Or you say, I'll just have all of it. And then like, whoever's giving it to you is going to egress probably more than you consume. And you're going to, you know, all, all sorts of inefficiencies and stuff there. So, um, if we kind of put that aside, uh, then it's kind of still kind of useful because we have like for every car, we have a little file, which is like all of the blocks in the car. We don't really have a, like a giant index of everything. It's just a, a, little, a little index that you can use to pick out all of the data that you need from any given, um, any given car uh, on a per car level, um, which is great. And then it's like the missing point, that, um, the missing thing that we ha need here is just that we need like a mapping from our root hash to the car or cars that you can find that um, that data in so so yeah index mapping those two things um, so how does so how does it kind of work um, you get like a request to the gateway and uh, it asks for a root SID the gateway is going to try and obviously get all the blocks to satisfy that request so it needs to consult that mapping thing that second second thing um, and uh, it knows then which cars it can find the DAG in um, and needs to read the index and then once it has read the index it knows where every single block that could possibly be be needed to satisfy this request is and it's localized to that the like the 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 car that you're, the DAG that you're reading, the car that you're reading, um, which is which is kind of cool, um, and you just export the blocks and send them send them back. So um, reading is super simple as well, right? Um, there's two bits of information here that are kind of um, important that are like in um, the existing kind of web free storage world. Uh, we what we were doing was kind of generating these two bits of information and sort of storing it on behalf of the user, uh, and that kind of that kind of sucks. So we, uh, we, in in like decentralizing the whole of uh, web free storage into this Thoracha network, um, these two things really need to be addressed in some way. They like they need to be decentralized. Uh, uh, and so what we want to do is decentralize all of the things. Um, uh, and this is where the uh, IPNI comes in, which is why I'm glad my talk followed the. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the like previous one. Um, so uh, yeah, IPNI. and i um, the, you just heard about it, so I can, I don't, can probably skip over what, what it is, but indexing, indexing for the network. Um, uh, like at, at a um, kind of high level, you can think of IP and i as like a mapping from uh, block hashes. You can see in the URL here, you can just look up any, any hash um, and get back a, 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 like a provider, uh, some information about who who you can talk to to get gra grab hold of that um, that particular block. Um, you'll see here though that there's a little metadata field, uh, which is great, um, uh, and you can basically put anything anything in here uh, within a reasonable uh, reasonable size, I, I believe. Um, and you can kind of think of like actually, IPNI is really just a mapping of like block hashes to arbitrary data, and the provider information is just part of that arbitrary data. When you so IP, IPNI publishing looks a little bit like this. You publish an advert, uh, which is like advertisement. I don't, 
whenever you want. Um, this is like one of many, um, uh, there's, there's a whole chain of them. And uh, you, you basically have a, the metadata is in the advertisement and the advertisement link, links off to a list of hashes uh, that, that, you are, that you are publishing. So when you come to query for a particular hash, you get back a list of advertisements, a list of metadata for a given hash, and you can have more than one. Uh, so yeah. So what we want to do is leverage that metadata to be able to store that informa more information about, um, about the, the, uh, the, the SID or the car that we're, we're working with that is not just like a provider record. We've got, we've got things like we want to store like, you know, the, the actual um, offsets and lengths, for example. So there's two things that we want to store in the metadata, like the hash of an index, like a special a special index, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, and uh, the second thing is like a URL where that car was uploaded. So like literally just, a, just wherever it ended up. And that is just a dumb server somewhere in the decentralized network that you can make byte range requests to basically uh, to extract blocks. Uh, the index, this is the special, the special index that I talked about. Um, it's, it's, be, it's a little bit better than the Carvey 2 index in my opinion for my use case uh so and it's got it's got in here like you can see the the content field up there is like the the vafi our root cid of our, our data for our dag um and we call them shards but they're like because you can shard the bag across multiple car files you can have more than one car file with with a chunk a, a chunk of the the uh the dag in it um so the shards have a um a, a a SID, so that's the SID of the car or the hash of the car that we were talking about. And then they have a list of all of the multi hashes that you can find in that car and their offsets and lengths. So that, that's cool because um, we've got lengths in the index. Uh, and we also know which uh, we should know the, the, the SID of the car. So, um, so that's good as well. Um, cool. So. <laughs> synthetic hashes, uh, if you if you take the 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 like um, the the bytes of the the um, the multi hash for the root uh, root of the DAG and just sort of concatenate it with like some arbitrary string bytes uh, and then take the hash of that and use that as a multi hash. You can actually like store um, mo multiple bits of metadata for any given CID by creating another CID with a with a known uh, thing. So this is like for for the index, we might create a multi hash that that has this this in it. For the location, we might have a, a kind of something more like this. Um, and why why might we want to do that? Um, well, in in IPNI, you can uh, you can delete. Uh, uh, entry, uh, delete is it's the blockchain, so there's no real deleting, but you can kind of edit stuff. So you might want to, uh, so for something like the location URL, that's fairly immutable, right? Like you might, like whoever's storing that might end up dropping it. We might want to move it somewhere else. Um, and what we'd want to do then is kind of update the, the inf we'd like to like delete that piece, that inf piece of information from, from um, IPNI essentially. But we don't want to then um, like also delete the information about the index because uh, that's pretty that pretty immutable. <laughs> it is immutable, and um, uh, and so that just gives us some nice um, nice separation of concerns, right? Um, all right. So it's final bit. Thank you for. Um, Holding on, <laughs> in, so in in Storaccio, we we will have many nodes in the uh, in the network. Um, we we have like retrieval nodes, object storage nodes, um, and uh, the other node like we have Fisher nodes and uh, and all sorts, right? Um, just putting what 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 we do what we're using right now here. Um, we've got a client coming along. They're asking for a particular that that root hash that we were talking about. Um, uh, they ask a retrieval node, typically retrieval node. Um, would then ask IPNI for like the that special index, the UR, like the URL of where it can fetch that thing. We'd get back a, some information about like the, the car that, that it's in. You can see that in this case, that hash is in it got put to the object storage number one uh, node, uh, and you, you, we've got information in the index about the blocks that are in that. Um, in that car file uh, and their byte offsets. So once 
the retrieval node has that information. It has everything it needs to be able to satisfy the request. So it can then go to an object storage node and be like, okay, get, get that car, but this byte, this range of bytes, because I want that block. And it might make another one for the second block. Or like it might not, like it might make a, a request for bytes 0 to 110, because that sort of makes sense, right? But you get the idea. So they could be the distribute, like the blocks could be distributed around the car file. You've got to make a, a call. Um, it, it will also support like, um, what is it? Uh, Multi-part byte range requests, which are also a thing, which is good fun. Um, anyway, that aside. And then once, it's, once we've got the bytes, uh, we serve back the cat image uh, to the client. And, um, that's all I wanted to say, so thank you very much for listening and, uh, and... great.